Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to go over uh, things to keep in mind when choosing a Cardano stake pool. So first of all, we're gonna look at the pool size in terms of stake. And uh, the main difference here is that a large pool um, pays their rewards on a more uh, consistent basis than let's say a small pool. But over time, the average ROS, so return on stake, is the same between the two pools. So um, if you go to pool tool here, um, we can open the filters and you can you can see here um, is a stake filter. So you can change that uh, accordingly. And another thing to keep in mind is that you want to delegate to a pool that is not saturated or not even close to the saturation point. Um, so what you can do is you can click here and not saturate it. So that gets rid of, if you apply it, gets rid of a few pools that are at that saturation point. And then since you don't want to be even close to that point, um, because let's say you delegate to it and then more people join and then it becomes oversaturated and your um, rewards diminish after that point. So what you want to do is you want to change this to be around, I don't know, let's say maximum 30 million ADA um, for that. So if you apply that, uh, you can see here it filters out <clears throat> any pool with a live stake that has uh, more than 30 million ADA. Okay, um, next up is the difference in margin fee. So when you look at a pool with a 3% versus a 0% fee here, um, same stake, same fixed fee. Um, and then here the margin fee is 3% versus uh, the 0% over here. And then you can see that the rewards are 12.22 versus uh, 12.60. So the difference is only uh, 0.38 ADA. Um, so you really shouldn't make your decision solely based on the margin fee. But if you really want that extra uh, 0.38 ADA, then you can go ahead and uh, make sure that the, the margin fee is at 0%. Um, so we can change that in the filtering here at uh, margin fee. Um, so I would say anything less than 5% is probably uh, reasonable. So you can apply that here. And then next up is pool pledge. This is the pool operator's own delegation to the pool. Um, and it signifies how much skin in the game they have. This one is very much a personal preference. Um, and it depends on how much you want the pool operator to be invested into the pool um, themselves. So if you feel like they should have more than, I don't know, half a million ADA, you can change that uh, declared pledge minimum to half a million. But even pools that have 10,000 ADA as their pledge are are just as responsible and um, as supportive and you know passionate as pools that have you know a million in in pledge. So, but this is a personal preference that you can um, decide on. Then next up is mission driven. Does the pool's mission align with your values? Um, this is something that's a little bit harder to find out because you have to go to uh, through each pool separately. Um, but essentially, is the mission that the pool has something that you want to support. So for example, some pools um, donate to um, reforestation programs, they donate to different charities, um, and different nonprofits. So you can you can check that out and make sure that that's something you're supporting. And then once you once you decided on that, you also want to check if there's uh, proof for those donations that they're making, because a pool can say they're donating XYZ to some charity. Uh, but if there's no proof, there's no way of really knowing if they um, keep their promise. So next up is uh, active pool operator. Um, is the pool operator reachable slash active on social media? Um, so does the pool operator have a way to be contacted essentially, um, whether it be Twitter, um, maybe a Telegram group or a Discord group um, or anything like that where you can ask them questions. And then also does the pool operator contribute to the community in some way or ways. Um, for example, they create scripts or tools for other pool operators. Um, they make informative posts to help newcomers or the operator is part of the Cardano testnet, for example. And then last but not least, uh, disingenuous activities. Um, avoid pools that advertise themselves as having higher ROS than others. Um, pools have the same ROS it varies slightly with fees, just like I mentioned about here. And then also better luck than others. Um, previous luck does not determine future performance. So um, 
yeah, keep that in mind as well. 100% um, server uptime, that's not actually possible. Um, it, there's always some uh, very slight uh, server downtimes because of various reasons. And then the last thing is multiple pools. Uh, delegate to single pool operators to support decentralization. And then for this one, it kind of depends a little bit. So um, one great example for a uh, pool operator that has or operates multiple pools is uh, Andrew Westberg, who operates Blue Cheese Steakhouse. Um, in this case, he brings so much value to the community that it would be almost a waste um, if he didn't uh, operate multiple pools. And then on the contrary, you have 1% um, uh, pools, which is uh, one entity controlling 28 pools or 5.33% of the network's staked ADA. So yeah, it's, it, it is in there, obviously it's in their right to do so, um, but I try to tell people to, to try and avoid um, delegating to um, operators that operate such a vast amount of pools. So yeah, I hope this video helped you um, narrow down your search a little bit and uh, understand things to look out for when you're uh, choosing your stake pool. And yeah, like the video, uh, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time.